Thank you for joining us for session five of the six part family caregiver education series brought to you by the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia. My name is Katherine Shepard and I am one of the education coordinators with the Alzheimer's Society and I am pleased to join you from Cape Breton. The content of this session could bring up questions and emotions. There will be a phone number to call for support at the end of the session. As we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on sacred land that has been the site of human activity since time immemorial. We are in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, and we acknowledge them as past, present, and future caretakers of this land. As we begin this session, I'd like to share with you what we will be talking about and our learning goals and objectives. Our hope is that at the end of this session, you will have a better understanding of how behaviors are a response from the person with dementia to what is happening. We will look at how to recognize and reduce triggers that can help prevent some behaviors. We will explore strategies for specific behaviors, remembering that these are always suggestions. Dementia is always changing and unique for each person. One suggestion may work today, but not tomorrow. The goal is to give you tools to improve the relationship with the person with dementia and to improve everyone's quality of life. Dementia can cause changes to a person's brain, which can result in changes in a person's behavior. People with dementia from conditions such as Alzheimer's disease and other related dementias have a progressive biological brain disorder that over time can make it more and more difficult for them to remember things, to think clearly, to communicate with others, and to take care of themselves. We aren't born knowing how to communicate with a person with dementia, but we can learn. Improving your knowledge of responsive behaviors and communication skills can help make some situations less stressful and will likely improve the quality of your relationship with the person with dementia. Good communication skills will also enhance your ability to handle the responsive behavior that you may encounter. So as we begin, here are a few things to keep in mind. I'd like you to keep in mind that the behavior is a response or a reaction to something the person with dementia may need. They may have increased difficulty in expressing themselves through words or understand even what is being said. The brain is one of the most complex and important organs of the human body. It helps us to understand what is happening around us it provides us with our language, our skills, and it guides us in how to act in specific situations. Changes in a person's behavior can be a sign of impairment to the brain caused by dementia. Let's take the next few moments and talk about how each part of the brain controls different functions. Your brain is your most powerful, powerful organ, and yet it weighs only about three pounds. The brain is made up of three main parts. The cerebrum, which fills up most of your skull, it is involved in remembering, problem solving, thinking, and feeling. It also controls movement. The cerebellum sits at the back of your head under the cerebrum. It controls coordination and balance. And then the brain stem sits beneath your cerebrum in front of your cerebellum. It connects to the brain uh, and the spinal cord, and this controls autonomic functions such as breathing, digestion, heart rate, and blood pressure. Your brain's wrinkled surface is the specialized outer layer of the cerebrum called the cortex. Scientists have mapped, by, mapped out the cortex by identifying areas strongly linked to certain functions. So let's take a look at those functions now. The temporal lobe, which is the yellow, involves things like memory, understanding, and language. It's affected early in Alzheimer's disease and involved with memory and emotion. It controls that emotion and basic needs such as sleeping and eating. The temporal lobe also controls language, new learning, and short-term memory. The parietal lobe, which is the blue, deals with things like perception, 
making sense of the world, and even spelling. It helps us sequence actions, such as getting dressed in the right order, or starting and driving a car. And also, if you think about perception, it helps us make sense of the world around us. The frontal lobe, which is in pink, deals with things like executive functions, thinking, planning, organizing, problem solving. It also controls emotion and behaviors. It initiates activity and lets us plan and organize our actions. It also regulates social judgment and behavior. The occipital lobe, which is the green, is at the back of our brain. It controls vision and the ability to see and combine colors, shapes, angles, and movements all into meaningful patterns. And then there's that cerebellum, that orange disc or shell-shaped part, and that is our balance. Dementia can have an effect on how a person behaves. These changes in behavior can be upsetting and frustrating for both the person with dementia and for those around them. Responsive behaviors and reactive behaviors are terms commonly used to refer to actions, words, or gestures presented by a person living with dementia as a way of responding to something that is happening in their social and physical environment. Learning about responsive behaviors and the other changes that may occur as the dementia progresses can help prepare you for the ups and downs that often accompany this disease. As the disease progresses, acknowledge that damage to the brain can make it difficult to express thoughts and perform routine tasks. You may notice that the person with dementia is jumbling words or having trouble dressing or getting frustrated or angry or acting in unexpected ways. While these changes are difficult for everyone involved, resources are available to help you both. And as the disease progresses, there will be more challenges and days ahead. Remember though, there will also be good days. As your relationship with the person with dementia changes, you can find new ways to connect. And as you experience new changes, remember that the person with dementia, like anyone else, still has that need for human engagement and connection. Simple things like a smile or holding their hand can go a long way. Ultimately, we can't expect the person with dementia to change. We must do the changing. We need to understand the disease, be patient, and accept the person who they are in this moment. Responsive behaviors are the result of changes in the brain affecting memory, judgment, orientation, mood, and behavior. To help us understand why a person is behaving a certain way, remember that all behavior has meaning and behavior is usually a response to something. Behaviors are very complex and you need to consider whether the behavior is upsetting or a risk for the person or others. And if it isn't, does anything really need to be done? We know that a person with dementia is not trying to be difficult. We need to try and understand and make the connections between the behavior and what the person is trying to tell us. It's only after understanding the behavior that we can find a solution to address it. Some common examples of responsive behaviors can include things like agitation, losing your way, becoming restless, having hallucinations or becoming paranoid, becoming more withdrawn. They are the result of changes in the brain affecting memory, judgment, mood, and behavior. Responsive behaviors follow these following principles. All personal expressions, words, gestures, and actions have meaning. Personal expressions communicate meanings, needs, and concerns. To understand their meaning, you must consider the factors that influence the behavior. So consider things like the physical person, the emotional person, and what's happening even in the environment. When someone exhibits a responsive behavior, reflect on whether it's a problem for the person diagnosed or for you, or <clears throat> will a 
the solution cause more anxiety? Will changing my expectations affect the problem? So you might be wondering, what should I consider when trying to understand the person's behavior and why? Many behaviors can be the result of a physical health problem. And so it's always recommended that a person with dementia have a medical assessment in order to rule this out first, especially if this is a new behavior. Sensory impairments such as hearing and vision loss can also cause confusion, fear, and anxiety, which may result in a responsive behavior. Because of this, it's very important that people with dementia have their annual hearing and vision evaluations and that they use assistive devices like hearing aids and eyeglasses if they're needed. Are the person's physical needs being met? For example, think about the last time the person had something to eat or to drink. Could they be hungry or thirsty? Is the person being engaged in meaningful activities? A person may display responsive behaviors if they are feeling restless or even bored. Are there patterns to the behavior? For example, are you noticing that the person seems to always be anxious or agitated in the same place at the same time of day or when engaged with certain activities? Does the person's environment meet their needs? As the dementia progresses, noisy and crowded environments may make the person with dementia more anxious or confused, and this can result in a responsive behavior. As the disease progresses again, the person with dementia may believe that they are living in the past. For example, they may think that they are still working, even if they retired years ago. To help you understand their behavior, think about the person's life story, such as their routine, their career, their education, and their hobbies. While all of this information offers strategies for the moment in the moment behaviors, think about their true meaning. Consider these questions regarding what happened before, during, and after the event. So physical, are their basic needs being met? Are they in discomfort or pain? What changes in their physical condition do I see? What about intellectual? Have they experienced recent changes in their memory? Have they been showing impulsive behavior or are they struggling with speech or sequent tasks, tasks like getting dressed? What about the emotional? Have you noticed an increase in tearfulness or anxiety? Does the person with dementia seem lonely or have they exhibited any new or unusual behavior? And what about their capabilities? Can the person with dementia do more than you realize? Or does that person understand that they may even need a little help themselves? And what about the environment? Is there too much noise or too large of a crowd around? Is the lighting poor? Is it making it hard for them to see or navigate? Is there enough stimulation? And how about the social? Their childhood, adulthood, and employment experiences do they offer any insight? And what do you know about their religion or culture? And finally, what am I doing or not doing that might contribute to this behavior? Stay tuned and we'll be right back in a moment with more. Next, we're going to think about triggers. Think of triggers as the things that can lead to the response of behavior when a situation arises. We might need to try and understand what might have caused or contributed to the behavior and take steps to reduce or eliminate those triggers if that's possible. If you know what the trigger is, restrict access to it. So perhaps removing things that might upset the person with dementia, turning off the television or even turning the volume down, Knowing the unique background and preferences and characteristics of the person with dementia can really help you determine what options are most likely to help. Please know that these strategies may not work for everyone. Sometimes the first strategy is not successful or it may work the first time but not with subsequent attempts. Talking to other care partners can be a great way to share and learn because they might also have suggestions for other possible approaches as a lived experience. The Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia has some great support groups you might be interested in taking part in. 
When we think of triggers, there are four main areas that can be helpful to investigate that can generally contribute to responsive behaviors. They include person, environment, task, and approach. Let's look at person. Does your family member have perhaps an acute illness like a urinary tract infection that could be contributing to restlessness? What about things like dehydration or fatigue, maybe even a reaction to new medications or a disrupted routine? Maybe they're not sleeping as well. What about hearing and vision? And even things like depression are important to consider. Let's think about environment next. Is there too much stimulation or not enough? Are, there, are they in unfamiliar surroundings? Has their routine been upset? Is the room too warm or the bath water too cold? Task. Did we ask our person with dementia to do an activity that is too complex, unfamiliar, or did we initiate it at an inappropriate time, for example? And finally, approach. Is there anything in your approach, like your body language, your physical positioning, the tone of voice or mood, or even emotions that might be triggering the response? Remember to do with instead of for. When we try to understand what the possible triggers may be, ask yourself, what is the person responding to? What is happening right now and what could be causing it? Consider the possibilities related to person, environment, task, and our approach. What is the person with dementia trying to tell me? So now you're probably wondering, well, what can I do to help? Well, here are a few things you could try. Respond in a supportive manner and reassure in a gentle voice. Reduce the noise, ensure a consistent routine if possible, speak slowly and use repetition, Break activities into manageable steps, distract as appropriate, and then approach from the front and remain at the same eye level. Leave the room for a timeout if you need to. It's okay. Remember, it is the disease and not the person. Avoid arguing or expressing anger or irritation, both verbally and non-verbally. Once you identify what a possible trigger may be, Try to restrict access to it. Remove things that may upset the person with dementia. Turn down the television or turn on lights, for example. Some triggers can't be removed, and so the best thing we can do is try to limit our exposure to that trigger. People with dementia are like the rest of us. Each person has a story, a unique personality, life experience, interests and preferences. Like the rest of us, they need caring people to help them stay relaxed, to feel safe, and to maintain their dignity. Their perception of reality, however, can differ from ours. And ultimately, we can't expect the person with dementia to change. We must change. We need to accept the individual as they are in the moment. Changes in behavior can be some of the most distressing. As the disease progresses, people may experience depression, anxiety, irritability, and repetitive behaviors. As the disease progresses, other changes may occur, including sleep changes, physical um, and verbal outbursts, or even losing their way. Understanding what behaviors, learning how to assist the person with dementia can really help. What we need to do when a behavior is happening is to explore these ideas and try to understand why it is happening. As people with dementia lose more of their abilities, maybe to find words or express thoughts, follow conversations, they also may have more difficulty even understanding others. Communication changes include trouble finding the right word, repeating questions, losing a train of thought, maybe reverting back to a first language learned, and even relying on nonverbal communication. You can help communication by making simple changes, such as speaking slowly and distinctly in a gentle tone. If you notice a sudden change in communication, make sure to contact a family physician, a nurse practitioner, or a nurse to see if this could indicate other medical issues, such as a side effect of a medication. Your family member 
may refuse, perhaps let's say, to enter a living room in the evening. So let's think about what we can do or what could be contributing to this. So is the lighting low? Is it making shadows in a room? Try turning on lights, even opening the curtains. Maybe the TV is too loud, or perhaps there's a TV show on that where their perception and reality may not be quite the same as ours could be very scary. Then I want you to think about who is the behavior a problem for? So for example, if your person repeats the same story multiple times, is the repetition really a problem or is it a challenge for us because we've heard this story many times? Will the solution cause more anxiety than the problem? So for example, um, if your person has an appointment but has challenges with orientation to day and date, sometimes putting it on a calendar or a big wall calendar isn't always beneficial. Maybe it's better to tell them about the appointment to the day of and when it comes time to take them there. And then we have to consider, is the behavior a safety concern? And if so, it's important to solve that behavior. Behaviors are safety concerns if the person is at risk of harm or injury to themselves or to someone else. So for example, has your person left a dish towel to dry on a stove that's hot or lit? If, it, if those situations are happening, then it's time to strategize and come up with solutions. Coming up with strategies is the next thing that we're going to talk about. Responsive behavior following these principles. All personal expressions, words, gestures, and actions have meaning. Personal expressions are ways that people communicate meanings, needs, and concerns. And to understand their meaning, you must first consider the factors influencing the behavior. And that takes us back to the physical, the emotional, and the environmental. If a particular behavior is causing some concern, then try this method of problem solving. Identify the behavior. Describe it specifically. Look at what happened directly before the behavior occurred and look at what happened immediately after the behavior occurred. Remember to look at the physical, the social, and that environmental factor that may be contributing to the behavior. You may have to observe the behavior a few times. Write it down. See if a pattern will emerge, and then you can try different strategies. So what are some of the solutions? Well, if we can, we want to eliminate the trigger. Is there something that could be changed to avoid this occurring the next time? The main goal is to try and minimize the trigger that can lead to that responsive behavior. And when a situation arises, we need to try and understand what might have caused or contributed to the behavior and then take steps to reduce or eliminate those triggers if that's possible. We want to rechannel the behavior into something positive or constructive. Maybe ask if the person would like to go for a walk, do a puzzle, or perhaps even rake some leaves. Distract the person and get them interested in something else. So how can you respond? Try to identify the immediate cause. Think about what might have happened. Think about before the reaction, something that may have triggered that behavior. Rule out things, for example, pain. Pain can trigger a behavior for a person with dementia. Focus on the feelings. Rather than focusing on specific details, consider the person's emotions. Look for behaviors behind the words or actions. Don't get upset, be positive and reassuring. Speak slowly in a soft tone. Try to limit other distractions if you can. Examine the person's surroundings and adapt them to avoid similar situations. You could try a relaxing activity. For example, try music or even soft uh, exercise to help soothe the person. Shift the focus to another activity. The immediate situation or activity may have unintentionally caused the response. Try something different. Take a break. If the person is in a safe environment and you're able to, walk away and take a moment for yourself. Ensure safety. Make sure that you and the person are safe. If the person is unable to calm down, then seek assistance from others. 
and if you do call 911 for an emergency situation, make sure to let the first responders know that the person has dementia. There's more to come after this break. <clears throat> Let's take the next few minutes and look at a couple of common behaviors and think about some strategies for support. So let's think about this as the symptom. Problem with language. Forgetting simple words or using the same word or the wrong word. The more dementia progresses, the more difficult conversation can become. While feeling disheartened is normal, don't give up. What could be the behavioral response? Well, perhaps somebody will start to have some repetition in the words that they use. Maybe they'll withdraw from conversation because they have difficulty expressing themselves. What could you see the emotion be because of this? Maybe the person will become frustrated or agitated or even angry. So what are some possible strategies? Well, if a person with dementia is repeating themselves, try practicing patience. Listen to the story and ask them to tell you more about it. This is an easy opening for you to be able to communicate together freely. If the person is withdrawing, they may be overstimulated or unable to follow the conversation. It may be helpful to bring them to a quiet place where they can collect themselves. Be patient, allow time for a response. As dementia progresses, the person with the disease may no longer be able to communicate verbally what their basic needs are, such as the need for food or drink or sleep. And so when communication becomes difficult, the person may start using behaviors to communicate their needs to those that are around them. So how can we respond to that? Well, stay calm. The key is sometimes people with dementia will have trouble with language and forgetting words and even names. And although being called by a different, different name or not being recognized at all can be painful, try not to make your hurt apparent. Respond with a brief explanation and don't overwhelm the person with a lengthy statement or reason. Instead, clarify with a simple explanation. Show photos or use other reminders. Photographs and other thought provoking provoking items can help remind the person of the important relationship or place. Travel with that person to where they are in their own time and space. If the person's memory is focused on a particular time about their life, engage them in a conversation or recollections with an understanding that this is their current reality. Avoid explanations that sound like scolding. Try things like I thought it was a fork, or I think that's your granddaughter. Try not to take it personally. Alzheimer's disease causes the person with dementia to forget, but your support and understanding will always continue to be appreciated. Let's think about the next symptom, disorientation in time and space. So maybe not knowing what day of the week it is, or even coming out of your home, turning left and getting lost. What could be the behavioral response? Well, getting disoriented in public places, missing appointments, forgetting family birthdays or anniversaries. What emotion could we see go along with this? Well, frustration, anger, agitation, worry. And so what are our possible strategies? Well, missing appointments, forgetting birthdays. You can write it down on a wall calendar or use a special clock with a day and a date. If this causes anxiety, then maybe try telling them about the appointments just before it's time to leave. If the person with dementia is losing their way or has some disorientation, try to be with your family member for guidance. And if you're not able to be there, maybe place a contact information card in a family member's pocket, wallet, or purse. Maybe even look into the possibility of a Medic Alert Safely Home bracelet. Dementia can cause people to lose their ability to recognize familiar places and faces, so they may also lose their way or become confused about their location. The person with dementia may have a hard time recognizing their physical surroundings and perhaps even get lost in a place that has always been familiar. They may not understand what to do in a particular setting, 
so changes in senses such as sight and hearing can also make it difficult for the person to understand what is happening which may cause that anxiety anger or even withdrawal all self-protective behaviors so how can we help to reduce the risk of wandering or losing their way provide opportunities for the person to engage in struct structured and meaningful activities throughout a day identify a time of day that the person is most likely to wander and plan things to do during this time activities and exercise may help reduce that anxiety or restlessness ensure all their basic needs are being met things like toileting nutrition and hydration involve the person in daily activities such as folding laundry or even preparing dinner and reassure that person if they do feel lost or disoriented if the person is still safely able to drive consider using a gps device to help out if they get lost and if a person is no longer driving perhaps removing access to car keys a person living with dementia may not just wander by foot they may also forget that they are no longer able to drive avoid busy places that can be confusing and can cause disorientation maybe like a shopping mall or a busy store access the person's response to new surroundings so don't leave the person uh, with dementia if the surroundings are new or if they could cause confusion or disorientation let's look at the third symptom problem with abstract thinking maybe things like paying the same bill twice overdrawing from a bank account or difficulty using telephone or the computer maybe mistakes providing cash at the checkout this can really make people vulnerable as well to fraud and theft and things like money having money going missing what could be the behavioral response well they may become more suspicious of others they may exhibit exhibit emotions such as anxiety or worry so what could be some possible strategies well set the person up for automatic debit payment for bills maybe providing smaller amounts of cash for them to have on hand putting limitations on credit cards and bank withdrawals i think it's also very important that people that we need to acknowledge that people may not understand what they are being asked to do and at times can be overstimulated or even understimulated or feel rushed this can really happen when someone's perhaps checking out at a grocery store this may cause frustration which may result in a responsive behavior what about the symptoms such as a change in mood or behavior so your person is exhibiting mood swings the behavioral response to this well when this part of the brain is affected by dementia sometimes the ability to see what your own limitations are can also be affected this person could lack insight what are the emotions oftentimes we'll see people being fearful or suspicious maybe anger or frustration or even anxiety what are our possible strategies well we want to acknowledge their emotions and provide reassurance play some familiar music that perhaps could soothe the person or reminisce about a pleasant time if the person with dementia is unable to use words to communicate their pain then they might start using behaviors as a way of communication some behaviors might include becoming agitated or withdrawing from others sometimes families or even healthcare staff may find these behaviors disruptive people may also experience depression or delusions delusions are false beliefs about someone or something or a delirium which is an intense episode of confusion and respond with behaviors that others might find difficult to understand how do we respond to this well we want to make sure that we ask permission and go slow use calm and positive statements reassure slow down maybe add some light or offer guided choices between two options focus on pleasant events offer simple options and try to limit stimulation maybe saying things like may i help you or do you have time to help me you're safe here everything is under control i apologize i'm sorry that you're upset 
I know this is hard. Or even something like, I'll stay with you until you feel better. Make sure we're listening to the frustration. Find out what may be causing the agitation and try to understand that. Provide reassurance. Use that calming phrase again. Things like, you're safe here, or I'm sorry that you're upset. Let the person know that you are here. Let's take a look now at a couple of examples at how we can help someone uh, who is exhibiting a responsive behavior. Remember, each person is different, and so you'll have to look at the uniquenesses of the person that you're supporting in working to find a solution that works best for them. Here's our situation number one. A person with dementia living at home with support from family, friends, and home care staff. It was noticed that every day around four o'clock, that person with dementia would get very anxious and pace the same hallway back and forth. The behavior usually lasted for about 30 to 40 minutes. When trying to understand why this behavior was happening, the home care staff asked the family about the routine, the hobbies, and the career. And what they found out was that this person with dementia was a stay-at-home parent. As part of their routine, they would pick the children up from school every day at 4 o'clock. When this was learned, they realized that perhaps the pacing at 4 o'clock every day was happening because the person with dementia believed it was time that the children needed to be picked up from school. To help reduce the behavior, they decided to change the routine just slightly. At four o'clock, someone was in charge of a meaningful and engaging activity, like going for a walk or perhaps baking some favorite cookies to help diminish that restlessness and that agitated behavior. So now let's break down situations even more. Let's think about how things can help, what we can try, or maybe even things that are not as helpful. So for example, you notice the person with dementia picks at their clothes or seems restless. They can't seem to sit still and others around them are now getting upset by this behavior. What could we try? Well, maybe give them something to hold, distract their attention with music or talk about a happy moment in their life. Go for a walk. Consider things like the environment. Is it too noisy or bright? Or even the time of day. Are they getting tired and looking to have a rest? We don't want to tell them to stop picking or tell them to calm down with a raised voice. What about this example? Someone with dementia who has become fearful or anxious at night because they let you know that they see spiders crawling on their walls. What can we do? Well, let's validate that fear. Saying things like, that must be very frightening is a great way to do it. Remove shadows that could be misinterpreted, so perhaps increase lighting. Maybe try to distract, add some music, maybe play a game of cards or look at some photos. It may be useful to see if there are any hearing or vision problems. We don't want to say things like, you see there's nothing here, it's just time to go to bed. Remember, reality and perception can be very different for a person with dementia. We don't want to get angry, we definitely don't want to argue. Think about this situation. Perhaps the person with dementia is convinced that something or someone has stolen money from them. It's a delusion, a firmly held belief that things are, that are not real. And this may occur for people with dementia. Confusion and memory loss, such as the inability to remember certain people or objects, can also contribute to these untrue beliefs. A person with dementia may believe someone is stealing from them or taking their possessions. This kind of suspicious delusion is often referred to as paranoia. Although not grounded in reality, the situation is very real to the person with dementia. Keep in mind that a person with dementia is trying to make sense of their world with a declining cognitive function. A delusion is not the same as a hallucination. While delusions involve false beliefs, hallucinations are false perceptions of objects or events that can be sensory in nature. How can we respond? Well, we want to try and listen to what is troubling that person and to try to understand their reality and then be reassuring and let the person know that you care. We don't want to argue or try to convince them. 
allow the person with dementia to express their ideas, acknowledge their opinions, offer simple answers, and share your thoughts, but keep it simple as not to overwhelm with lengthy explanations or reasons. Maybe try to switch the focus to another activity. Engaging the individual in an activity or asking for help with a chore can really be helpful. If a person is often searching for a specific item, maybe try having a duplicate on hand and see if that helps. Another thing that we often hear in another situation is, I want to go home. Someone perhaps has recently moved to an assisted living, a smaller apartment, or even to a long-term care home and is constantly asking to go back home. We want to acknowledge that those are real feelings Ask them about home and where they grew up. Reminisce, even if you don't know all the answers. We don't want to explain to them that this is their new home. And if you are visiting someone and they become distraught when you try to leave, get ready um, for a, a few little helpful hints that we can try. Maybe provide a reason for your departure, like I'm off to the dentist or I need to get a quick oil change for the car. Maybe walk them to their next activity, join in for a few moments, and then with a quick farewell, scoot away. Try not to say goodbye. Instead, try things like see you soon or even bye for now. And finally, think about this situation. When someone is repeating themselves, a person with dementia may do or say something over and over, like repeating a word or a question or an activity, or undo something that has just been finished. In most cases, they're probably looking for comfort or security and familiarity. Earlier, we talked about how the main cause of a behavioral symptom in dementia is a decline in the individual's ability to make sense of the world. In the case of repetition, the person may not remember that they have just asked that question or just completed that task. Environmental influences can also cause symptoms or even make it worse. People with dementia who ask questions repeatedly may be trying to express a specific concern, ask for help, or even cope with a frustration, anxiety, or insecurity. How can we respond? Well, look for a reason behind that repetition. Does the repetition occur around certain people or surroundings or at a certain time of day? Is the person trying to communicate something? Focus on the emotion. Rather than reacting to what the person is doing, think about how they are feeling. Try to stay calm and be patient. Reassure the person with a calm voice and a gentle touch. Don't argue or try to use the logic. Dementia affects memory and the person may not remember that they just asked that question. Provide an answer if you can. Give the person with dementia the answer that they're looking for, even if you have to repeat it several times. If the person with dementia is still able to read and comprehend, it might even be helpful to write it down or put a post-it note in a prominent location. We want to engage that person in an activity. The individual may simply be bored and need something to do. Provide structure and engage that person in something pleasant. Try using memory aids. If the person asks the same question over and over again, Often reminders like notes or clocks or calendars or photographs can be helpful if they're still meaningful. And then we want to accept the behavior and work with it. If it isn't harmful, don't worry about it. Find a way to work with it. The quote in this slide is basically a summary of the session. The person with dementia cannot change, and so we need to be creative in the way we support the individual. What may work today may not work tomorrow. Flexibility is the key. There is no one-size-fits-all formula when it comes to dementia. Communication is a vital part of our lives. It allows us to express who we are and relate to one another. Communication is more than talking and listening. It involves understanding and interpreting. Dementia affects how people express themselves and understand what is being communicated to them. For the person living with dementia, maintaining relationships can be a complex process, especially when verbal communication is affected. The following changes can be common for people with dementia. 
There may be some difficulty finding words, creating new words for ones that are forgotten. Maybe they will repeat a word or phrase. Maybe they will have difficulty organizing words into a logical sentence. And sometimes people can even revert to the first language that was learned. You might notice people will talk less than usual. And you may find the person living with dementia has good days and bad days, just like we do. This can depend on the person's uh, ability and quality and the amount of sleep or stress or other medical conditions. And needs that may require day-to-day -day care can also inf influence this. These can result in conversations. This repetitive behavior can result in conversations that can feel onerous and frustrating for both you and the person living with dementia. So what can we do to help? Well, what are our tips for successful communication? Try to engage the person in one-on-one -on -one conversation in a quiet space that has minimal distractions. Speak slowly and clearly and maintain eye contact. It shows you care about what they're saying. Give the person plenty of time to respond so that they can think about what they need to say. Be patient and offer reassurance. It may encourage the person to explain their thoughts. Ask one question at a time or even yes or no or option questions. So for example, would you like some coffee rather than what would you like to drink? Avoid criticizing or, or correcting. Instead, listen and try to find the meaning in what the person is saying. Repeat what was said just to clarify if you need. Avoid arguing. If the person says something that you don't agree with, let it be. Avoid asking people to problem solve or ask if they remember. Often clear step-by-step -step instructions can be the best way instead of lengthy requests that can be overwhelming. Give visual cues. Demonstrate a task to encourage participation. Try written notes. If your person can still read or finds that more helpful when words can be confusing, post-it notes are a great way. Try using humor and smile. Go at their pace and even accept inappropriate answers. When we're talking about communication tips for people with dementia, the things we want to keep most in mind, well, use what you know about the person. What does the person like? Use that knowledge to suggest conversations, topics, or activities that they may enjoy. We want to nurture the person's skills and abilities. Focus on what they can do instead of what they can't. When the person is making a choice, offer them a couple of options that you know they will like. Try to reduce distractions. So take note of possible visual or auditory distractions in the person's environment and try to minimize them. We want to try to account for any hearing or vision challenges that the person may have. When we say chat face to face, what that allows us to do is make eye contact with the person. We want to avoid talking to the person if you're behind them or where they can't see you. Speak clearly, use short and simple sentences. Show as well as talk. Use actions that can help give your words meaning. We want to be flexible. A person's abilities can change from day to day, so take a few moments at the beginning of the conversation to assess how they're doing. Look for changes in behavior and body language that may tell you if the person is fe what the person is feeling, especially if it indicates discomfort. Adjust to accommodate. When the person is unable to communicate verbally, communicate through senses like touch. And finally, stay positive. Be aware of your own tone and body language. Model the mood. Connect instead of correct. Ignore mistakes and give encouragement. When you feel overwhelmed, take a step back and exhale and take care of yourself too. On the days when these tips don't seem to help, Remember that your presence is still felt by the person living with dementia. It's not easy to be there for the person while also taking care of yourself at the same time. It's important to find a healthy balance and ask for a hand when you need it. So what are our key messages? Well, the person with dementia is experiencing changes in their brain that affect the way they perceive the world around them and the way that they respond. They need the support and the help of people who know them in order to navigate the world. 
The key is knowing the person and offering the right amount of support while trying to help them maintain their independence as much as they can. It's important to remember that the person with dementia will have good days and bad days, just as you and I have good days and bad days. Some days just be more intense or extreme. I want you to think about the person-centered care as a philosophy that recognizes that individuals have unique values, personal history, and personality, and that each person has an equal right to dignity, respect, and to participate fully in their environment and their ultimate goal of person-centered care is to enhance quality of life with quality of care. Consider the feelings behind words or sounds. Sometimes the emotions being expressed are more important than what's actually being said. Treat the person with dignity and respect. Avoid talking down to the person as if they aren't there. It's okay if you don't know what to say. Your presence and friendship are most important. Dementia doesn't stop and neither do we. Our staff and volunteers provide support programs, educational resources and referral services and more to ease the quality and stress of care and improve the quality of life for people living with Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, as well as their caregivers and families. Or if you are concerned that you may have dementia or have been recently diagnosed and are unsure what the next step is, the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia can help you get the information you need. Experience has shown that the earlier people begin to learn and strategize about living with dementia, the better they are prepared. Earlier preparation can also help care partners support, provide the support as the disease progresses. We hope that you will find relief in knowing that you are not alone. To get you through these difficult times, we have developed some very helpful resources that can help that you can access through our website and also through information and support line. No matter where you live in Canada, you have a society that can be involved. Your society can help support you with programs, services, educations, and resources tailored to you. If you'd like to learn more, please call your local Alzheimer's Society. It's never too early or too late to connect. Thank you for joining us for session five in the six part family caregiver education series brought to you by the Alzheimer's Society of Nova Scotia.